Hey guys, Nick here and welcome back to another video. Today we're talking about editing software, more specifically DaVinci Resolve, because I've actually recently completely migrated my entire editing workflow over to using DaVinci Resolve. Um, I used to use Final Cut Pro. I have done a few tutorials in Final Cut Pro in the past, if you wanna check them out. Uh, but I thought I'd do this video, talk to you about my reasonings why I switched and you know, maybe if you wanna to switch too. Hey guys, Nick here and welcome back to That Modern Dude, your home for tech and modern lifestyle videos. So if you are new to the channel, consider subscribing down below. Talking about DaVinci Resolve, right off the bat, there is no one editing software or right editing software, right? It's whatever works well for you. Editing software is a tool and uh, whatever tool helps you get the best results is obviously the one you should use. So a little bit of background. So I've used Premiere Pro uh, a few years ago. Uh, then I moved to Final Cut Pro when I got a MacBook and I've been using Final Cut Pro now for a couple of years, but it's never quite satisfied what I've wanted. And what I want in an NLE editor is very simple. I want a lot of customization in terms of editing. I want to be able to edit parameters and you know go right in depth into controlling the footage. I want it to be well laid out and organized and I need it to be quick and I need it to have a good sort of workflow system if I want to go and do more heavy effects work stuff, which I kind of just dabble in as a hobby, but it is something that I like to do. And with that in mind, I want to start off with the number one reason why I switched to DaVinci Resolve and that is organization. Now again, this isn't to say that Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro do this poorly. It's just in my opinion, how I use the software, I don't like it. So let's take a look at Premiere Pro. So with Premiere Pro, we have the standard layout here, right? With the timeline there. And I've kind of got this set up a little bit differently, but that's fine. And then you have different tabs up here set up for color effects, audio, graphics, you get the point, right? It's set up a specific way. But Premiere Pro can be used a multitude of different ways. And switching over to Final Cut Pro, it is very much the same. We can change the workspaces to an organization workspace where we can organize our clips, or we can go to color and effects and do all that. But the thing is, and this is the problem I have with both Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro is those workspaces don't really mean anything because I can open the color tab here if I want to, I can open effects, transitions, all this sort of stuff. You know, I can drag the timeline down and resize this if I wanna do some clip organization. It's just, it has the organization there, but it's not sort of set out in a particular way. You can kind of just do whatever you want, whenever you want. And that's great for some people. Me personally, I like to have things sort of segregated off so that I can focus on one task at a time, which is why I like Resolve. So if we switch over to Resolve, here we are in the editing timeline. And like the other two softwares, DaVinci Resolve has different workspaces set out down below. But unlike the others, these are their own workspaces, meaning you can't bring those features into say the main timeline. So if I go over here, this is the clip organization window and yes, it's a bit intimidating, but this is where I can create bins for all my, you know, let's create a bin here for the main footage and you know, and I can organize my footage and I can spend my time in here organizing the footage. And once I've finished that, I can move on to editing. And here is obviously where I can fix the timeline up and make, you know, make cuts if I wanna make cuts and all that lovely stuff. But whilst in the timeline, you're fully focused on the edit, right? You don't, you can't access color correction tools anywhere and all that sort of stuff. It's just editing. If you want to color correct, you have to go down to color correction tab. And this is where you have all your color correction tools and all your cuts and clips and all that here. But, and that, and I love the way that this is set out because it means that at any one point, you are focusing purely on one thing. I'm color coding this clip. I'm not thinking about how I've cut it. I'm not thinking about how I've edited it because I've already done that part. I'm purely focused on the task at hand. And that's, it's just something I really love about Resolve. Now, you might not like it, but for me, this was a huge factor. And again, it's got other tabs, like you've got your Fairlight audio. So if you wanna mix your audio professionally, like it's got that. And then at the end, I love this, how it's got like this deliver tab at the end where you can watch your whole clip through right in the timeline and you can choose your different export settings there. I, I absolutely love this about Resolve and it is kind of probably my favorite feature. Now, moving on to number two, and that is speed. I always found that Premiere Pro was very buggy. And as you can see here, it's actually completely crashed on me. 
And that is one of the main reasons why I switched to Final Cut Pro. And that is because Final Cut Pro, as everyone knows, is an absolute beast when it comes to editing on the Mac. It's very well optimized. Render times are quite fast. And whenever I switched to Premiere Pro, it was just night and day. Premiere was just way too slow. I could not edit the footage I wanted without creating proxies. DaVinci Resolve is also very well optimized. And in my usage, I have not found it to be any slower than Final Cut Pro. The final render times at the end when fully exporting your clip are ever so slightly slower, but we're talking we're talking about like an average export time of say two minutes in Final Cut Pro for your average sort of eight minute clip. Um, I'd probably do it two and a half to three minutes in DaVinci Resolve as opposed to almost 15, 20 minutes in Premiere. So we're a minute, that isn't, that's not gonna kill me. 15 minutes, that, that is a bit too much. And so I have found that crazily, DaVinci Resolve is ridiculously well optimized for the Mac, so much so that I don't notice any speed difference going between Final Cut Pro and DaVinci. And that leads me on to my third point, and that is controls. And by controls, I mean sort of being able to go in depth and you know, get into curve graphs and all this sort of stuff. Final Cut Pro is really great for beginner editors because it makes it very easy to make quick edits. But if you wanna go in and control finite details, if you wanna go into say retiming curves and re time remapping, quite a rudimentary way of going about it. And I come from an After Effects background where I, you know, I wanna have the ability to control those in-depth settings, but I don't always wanna think about them. And that's kind of why I really started to dislike Final Cut Pros because although it was very fast and very simple, I found that the simplicity of the program didn't give me enough control over it. And I wanted simple with control. And that is, you know, Premiere Pro is kind of the opposite. You get a lot of control, it's not that simple. I find DaVinci Resolve is sort of a nice mixture between the two. You have this really great trim edit tool that is very similar to editing in Final Cut Pro, right? You don't have to worry about cutting in and out. And if I wanna come over here, you know, I can cut that and adjust that down. It's actually really quick to edit, but unlike Final Cut Pro, if I wanna say grab this clip and move it here because I don't know, I want this space or whatever, I can do that. And I like that flexibility. Likewise is if I wanna do some time remapping, it's very simple to get into this clip here and I can turn on the time remapping tools. And this looks quite similar to um, Final Cut Pro, if you've ever used Final Cut Pro and you know, I can, let's just do that. So I've got a quick time remap there and it goes and speeds up and then goes normal speed. And that's great. That's very similar to how Final Cut Pro works. But if I really want to, I can right click here and I can go retime curve and click on we'll go retime speed. And now I have access to the keyframes and I can, you know, continue to adjust this or whatnot and I can grab the keyframes here and I can change the way that they act so that they ease in and out. And if I really want to, I can play around with the handles so I can grab that. That's a terrible example, but I have that access there if I want it. And I just love the fact that it's simple to make edits like Final Cut Pro, but it gives me access to the more in-depth controls when I need them. and. That is just something I've been waiting for for such a long time. And couple that with the speed of DaVinci Resolve, it just makes editing so, so easy and intuitive. And when you compare it to Premiere Pro, it's just in a completely different league because Premiere Pro doesn't have that simplicity, but it does have the control. DaVinci has both. All right, now onto my fourth reason why I've switched to DaVinci Resolve. And this isn't gonna be for everyone. This is kind of for me. I love dabbling in special effects as a hobby. It's just something I've always had interest in and I've, you know, I grew up using After Effects and I went to uni and studied 3D software and all that sort of stuff. So it's something I enjoy doing. This all comes back to the speed of Premiere Pro and how I just can't edit in it because it's too slow. And that sucks because Premiere Pro had a great dynamic link feature with, with After Effects. So obviously I wasn't using that. Final Cut Pro has no real easy way to export clips and get them into After Effects to do visual effects and it becomes a real pain. And this is for simple stuff such as tracking text. Like there's just no built in way to do that in Final Cut Pro. Well, with DaVinci Resolve 15, they've actually built in Fusion, which is Blackmagic sort of visual effects compositor. And although unlike After Effects, which is layer based, this is node based. Nodes is something from a completely other video. But it does give you the ability to not only track 
items, but you can do full advanced 3D compositing and all this sort of stuff in here. And I haven't gone full in depth. I need to still learn Fusion a bit more, but it's it's inbuilt. And on to the last reason why I switched to DaVinci Resolve, and that is the price. It's, well, free. Right? With Premiere Pro and Adobe products, you pay a monthly subscription fee, which is fine for a month or two, but after a year, you've, you know, you're reaching the hundreds of dollar mark. Final Cut Pro is about $400, and DaVinci Resolve, well, you can go onto the Blackmagic website. I'll leave the link down below if you want to check it out and download it today, now, for free, you get a full video editor. Yeah, there is a pro version with a few more extra features and you can check it out on their website. I don't, but even the pro version is only like $450 or so, which is ridiculously cheap. One time purchase, you get free upgrades. And for a lot of people out there, that is a really exciting thing. Not only can they get it for free, but if they get it for free and they try it and like it, you can buy the pro version, which is really, really awesome. Now, before I sign off, just a quick honorable mention as well is the saving in DaVinci Resolve. One of the things I hated in Premiere was the fact that you would always have to save, one, because you didn't know if it was gonna crash, and two, because the autosave feature sucked, and you just always wanted to make sure you had a copy, which was another thing great in Final Cut Pro is it just had a live save, so you didn't have to do anything. The moment you made a change, it would save it on the spot. DaVinci Resolve has the exact same thing. It has live save. So once you start the project once, all you have to do is save it the first time, so you can open it, save, and it will continuously save the project every time you make an edit, which is so good. You can exit it, jump back in. If it crashes, you don't have to worry about it. And one, this program's never crashed on me, which is which is awesome. And two, I've sometimes exited out of it on accident, come back in, and I've never lost an edit on it, which is super awesome. So there you have it, guys. Those are my five or six reasons why I switched to DaVinci Resolve. If you want to get, if you want me to do a more in-depth video on DaVinci, let me know in the comments below. Um, it's really great for me to do an in-depth video because I learn on the fly and we can learn from each other. It's just, it's a good thing to do. Let me know in the comments section below what editor do you use? Are you thinking about switching to DaVinci Resolve? Because I think you might. I think you should. Uh, until the next video, guys. See ya.